understanding the direction or challenge. Notice that in the improvement kata, there are four steps. And in step one, we are still in the planning phase. This is where our improvement journey begins in understanding what we're trying to achieve because we have to be able to connect our improvement work to the company's business objectives. So why should we have a challenge? Why is understanding the direction even important? For some of you, this may seem a no-brainer, but let me tell you a story about myself. In 2010, my first aha moment with the power of and the need for a goal, a direction, or a challenge was when our Portland Consortium was holding an Improvement Kata Coaching Kata workshop at one of our member companies. We had four teams looking at different aspects of their manufacturing process. At the, on the second day of the workshop, all of the teams happened to be back in the conference room, and they were all working to set their target conditions. So as I was walking around and listening to the teams, I stopped at one team, and I heard one team member say, well, for our target condition, I think that we have to remove the whip so that we can get the line to flow. And the, on the same team, another team member said, no, did you see how messy that line was? We absolutely have to 5S this line before we can do anything else. And I pondered on that for a second. These two teammates were arguing because we had actually not given them a direction to strive towards. We had not set a challenge for these teams to be striving towards. That was really impactful to me. We'd actually set these teams up to make random acts of improvement, which is the old way of thinking. It's what we were trying to move away from. As I walked around and listened to the other three teams, they were all struggling with the exact same thing. And I made the absolute commitment at that point that I would never do kata work again without a challenge for teams and workshops, for learners that I coach, or for myself. We had failed to connect these teams' improvement work to that company's business objectives. It was a really powerful moment. But in reality, it's easy to see with all of the uncertainty that we have in the world with business and with life, how it can be difficult to align challenges to business objectives. As individuals, we can only see as far as our flashlight shines. But in business, our managers and our leaders can see much further out than we can. They're monitoring the markets. They're connecting with and listening to the customers. And they're making fast adjustments based on that feedback. They are more like drivers of a car that is moving at 60 miles an hour down the road, where their headlight beam continues to move forward. We have to be able to respond to changes that are coming at us in the business place so that we can address those challenges. It's important that we understand where the leaders are driving the car so that we can align the work that we are doing as improvement folks to the company's business objectives. So let's talk about the development and the alignment of challenges. Where do they come from? Well, ideally, your leader and or executive. We must align the work that we're doing to the company's business objectives to help our companies be successful. One of the beautiful things that I love about challenges is that they take a big objective and they bring it much closer into where the work is actually being done, and that makes it completely relatable to everyone in the organization. A challenge at a senior level should drive sub-challenges or objectives at each level below, cascading their way down to the process level. So what are some elements of the challenge? Well, number one, they must align to the business objectives. Secondly, a challenge should describe what we're trying to achieve and not just be an outcome metric, like units produced or 95% quality. A challenge shouldn't describe the method and how you're going to achieve it. This helps free up the learner and the coach to find all kinds of creative ways and achieve all kinds of innovation on their way to achieving the challenge. Challenges are meant to stretch us so we learn, grow, and develop new skills and capabilities. And finally, challenges have to be time-based. We need a hard date because this is work that is crucial to our organization's success. 
Here are two examples of challenge statements that I've coached. One is from healthcare, where we're working to establish a meds to beds program for all adult hospital patients. The other is what I call a capability challenge. We've all been there with CADA if you've, if you've tried getting going with it. We want to get going, but we don't have that coaching capability. And so this particular challenge focused on building the skills and capabilities for learners and first coaches in an organization. As you can see, both of these challenges are time-based. Both describe what we're trying to achieve in more than just outcome or result metrics. And both definitely stretched us to find new, innovative, and creative ways to meet our business objectives. So what are some lessons learned? Well, first, if a challenge is too vague, we end up wandering our way through our improvements, hoping we get lucky and find ourselves on the right path. Secondly, if a challenge is too far out, four or five years, we aren't able to meet the business results fast enough, and our learners start to feel like the challenge is unachievable. Challenges have to be aligned to those business objectives. If they aren't, we aren't using our company's time and people resources effectively. And lastly, a challenge with only a result metric is really dangerous because there are a lot of ways to achieve a metric, and some of those are really harmful to our organizations. The information, the information that Julie just provided is spot on, and it's critical to our using the improvement cut and coaching cut effectively. Additionally, we believe there's a higher purpose to challenging our team members to solve critical business problems. We believe that every human being needs to be challenged in life and at work. We believe that every human being needs to be creative, the way we learn, the way we think, we invent. And we believe that every human being needs to be valued. Our attention, our energy, our contributions, they're critical and they need to be recognized. The kind of work we've been doing with organizations is meeting that need. We're finding higher levels of energy, higher levels of excitement, and higher levels of engagement working with the people that are within these patterns. This is all about us. This is about us learning. This is about us thriving. This is about us sharing and growing together with others. You may have heard the um, old Toyota um, adage, no problem is a problem. Toyota kept problems in front of all their people because it wanted them to think, to, to learn, to invent, to create, to innovate. Toyota sees this as respect for people. So it's apparent in this Taichi Ono quote that Toyota understood well the marriage of strong challenges and human creativity with the belief that there's no limit to people's creativity. Toyota established a pattern that kept challenges in front of their people all the time. As leaders and coaches in our organizations, when we fail to put big challenges in front of our people, then we're limiting the creativity and the benefit that they have for the organization. So in closing, as you go through this conference uh, today and tomorrow, keep these things in mind. One, always begin with a clear understanding of the direction and the challenge that you're trying to achieve. Two, remember that all of us need to constantly be challenged, constantly be creative, and constantly be valued. In doing so, and working with your people, we allow people to bring their highest contributions to the organization. And finally, all of our challenges have to be aligned to a business strategy. Thanks very much for giving us your attention this morning. Now, if you want to learn more about step one of the improvement kata, Beth Carrington, who's going to stand up, and she's waving behind many of you. Beth Carrington and I are facilitating a deep dive session on understanding the direction or challenge. And we welcome all of you to join us at one of our two sessions tomorrow. Don't be the cat. We'll see you there. <laughs>